Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I made this right here. So this was pretty much the interior part of the Neo Tokyo Art Station Challenge. And we're going to do a similar thing as what I did last week. Pretty much show you guys my blender file, just break it down and show you the different assets that I use, the stuff that I kid bash and the stuff that I made on my own. And then from there, we're going to go into Photoshop, kind of show you the whole Photoshop process as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. So right here is the blender file. Now, if you recall in the previous video, we had an image that looked like this right here. So this is the final image. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this focal point, this big piece up here, and pretty much just like, imagine as if like you're opening it in the middle and you're looking inside of it and seeing like what's in there, right? So I wanted to create this like nice little uh, a food court of some sort, you know, just like people coming out, eating and things like that. I know all these people walking towards the building, you know, they're, they're coming out to eat, drink something, you know, there's a little bar and things like that. So what I ended up doing is that I first made a new file, a new Blender file, and I took this main focal point. So this was the, the exterior shot, right? So this main focal point right here, and I copy pasted it into a new file. And you can straight up just do a control C, control V, like literally, like I can hit control C right here, go up here. Control V. There you go. Yeah, it's that easy. It's literally like photo. You can literally like copy paste objects from different Blender files, which I think is really handy at times. So I'm gonna undo this for now because we already have it up here. And so, well, my first thing was that I want to see the space inside of it. Like, how much room do I have up here? So, like this cube, I ended up get hiding it. So just press H on your keyboard while selecting something. You can hide stuff. If you, if you press Alt H, it all comes back, right? So I'm just gonna hide it for now. And uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted to create like an interior shot that's more like, you know, more brutalist slash cyberpunk. And I didn't want to like make everything from scratch. So since I already had a lot of assets made uh, in the exterior shot, I thought it'd be cool if I just like reuse them in, in any way possible. And the way that I did it, in a very efficient way. So I was able to like break these parts out of like a, a specific model. So the way you can do this is like, let's say for example, it's this right here, right? I'm gonna hit control A on this. We'll just do visual geometry to mesh because right now it has, uh... oh shit, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Anyways, whatever that is. I'm just gonna get that out of the way, okay? Now, if I go to tab, and then if I press A, select everything, press P, separate, separate by loose parts. So once I do that, then Blender kind of like separates these pieces out. Like, you know, this is all like separated out now. Like this piece right here, this piece right here. And so now you can like, kind of kid bash these all together and make new pieces from these. So I took a bunch of these already existing pieces from my building and I just ended up separating it out. And that's what I did to make all of this up here, like all these paneling and things like that. It was pretty handy in that kind, in that sense. So for example, let's see, where is it at? Like this panel right here. Like I made this pretty much by using these shapes up here. And I'm gonna demonstrate for that, you guys. Oh, and I'm gonna demonstrate that for you guys real quick. So we're gonna hit Shift D and always like copy it, right? Now some people, they like doing the all the kid bashing in a separate file. I personally like doing it in the same file that we have everything in the same file, you know? And it's easy to like keep track of the scale as well. So I'm just gonna rotate it real quick. And so we're just gonna hit shift, right click. Actually, let me turn on screencast. I always forget to do it. Screencast, there you go. Oh, oh hold on. Is it working? Okay, yeah, perfect. Try to turn on by default. Okay, so right here, for example, right? I'm gonna grab a cube real quick. Shift A, hold on. Shift A, mesh, cube. If you press, if you ever get like lost on your viewport, like somewhere down here, if you press the number pad period key, it brings you to it. 
basic blender things. Bring that towards the middle right here. Okay. I'm gonna take this, add a modifier. We're gonna do a mirror right here. Take this eyedropper tool, click it on that cube. And then I wanna mirror it on the Y axis. And now I can just start extruding stuff. Start copy pasting it. So I can take this. Maybe I can grab this first. E. Go up like that. Shift D. Bring this up here. Maybe scale it down a little bit. And also, it's also very. Uh, it's also look at the negative space. See if you get something cool. Then maybe we can rotate this like that. Nah, that's not good. And then I can probably grab this part right here. And if you click on a specific face and hit L, it selects that whole piece. You can shift D that. And bring that on top of it maybe. And so just like that, you can start building like some of these panels up here. Uh, let's see, maybe I can grab, let me grab this whole thing maybe. Press L. Let's do shift D one more time. Shift D again. I can have these little tiny ones right here. Maybe have it come out a little bit. And so you, know, you can get infinite results from this. And then what you can do, maybe like grab one of these pieces to extract it. Shift D. Up here. Maybe bring that down here on the corner. I think it's really big, so I might like scale it down a little bit. Let's do hard geometry. So I had it on my favorites. If you click, if you just right click, you can do set origin, origin to geometry. All right, bring this down. And then, cool. Click this again, add a modifier, mirror, eyedropper, grab this cube. We'll do it on the y-axis, there you go. Shift D. Maybe we'll put some right here. Maybe we can scale them up a little bit, maybe. Then probably grab these two again. Shift D again. Scale them down a little bit. Maybe we'll rotate them, I guess. Oh, I don't want X. Oh, you know what? Huh. So you can also like do it on Y and X axis and Z axis if you want to go super crazy with it. I only use one axis, but this was just a happy accident. <laughs> That's cool. And then so now you can like, once you're done with everything, just select everything. Control A, visual geometry to mesh. So it applies all the modifiers. And then now you can also hit Control J, which makes everything like one big piece. Now here, this panel is like really thin. Before I hit Control J, let's hit Control Z real quick. Go back again. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this panel up here. Maybe pull this part out a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Looking good. Okay, select everything. Control A. Mesh. And select everything again. Control J. Okay. So now this right here is like one piece. Now this as well, now you can make a copy of this, scale it up, scale it down, and there you go, you got another looking, another version of this panel. Maybe you can like rotate this a little bit and then scale it up this way. And then go up here, Shift D. Control M, boom. Put this up here. Select these two, Control J. Scale it up like that again. Scale it down. So you know the <laughs> the opportunities are like endless here. Like you can just like go around creating all kinds of cool shit here. So that's one of the techniques that I use for these paneling. So like right here, if you look at my scene, like this, this. And I just put them on the walls up here 
Okay. And so now, how did I make these, uh, these? So the way that I made this, I pretty much just used some of these parts up here. So I'm not going to show you guys how, how I exactly made this specific piece, but we're going to make something similar. Like, for example, this piece right here. Shift D, make that up here. Scale it down a little bit. And it's always helpful to have some sort of like a human scale so that you're making everything to scale. Because if the scale is off, everything is just going to look weird. So let's go up here. And so I'm just going to rotate this like that. Like this could be the little the little stand, the little table of this of the of the stall, the booth. And so if I want, I can probably just go to edit mode tab. Just like pull this out a little bit. We're gonna pull it. This is this is extruded. And see right now there's just like weird tiling happening. It's just because I don't have the correct face attribution turned on. So when I click that, let's hit Control Z. I mean, if I press G, I don't even have to extrude it. The, the texture is still there. Now, now the texture is pretty low res. Um, that's why it looks pretty blurry, but I'm not too worried about that, honestly. And then the same thing, we'll just put a cube up here. Cube, there you go. And this cube, one you can delete it later once you're done with the whole mirror. Add modifier, mirror, eyedropper tool, cube. Y axis, F U X S. And what's the other cool thing is that if you move this cube around, you can like move these guys around too. Because it's parented to that cube. So we'll just leave it in the middle. Let's put it down. Pull it down for now. That way we can easily delete it. So let's go ahead and scale it down. Bring these closer to each other. Yeah. And then maybe what you can also do is that. If you go to your UV editor, or you can just select everything by just like A, U, Q projection, it kind of it fixes the scaling a little bit of everything. So see how it was like stretched before? Now it's like much better. The other thing you can also do is that instead of using a Q projection, you can try smart UV project. That one works pretty well as well. And so once again, the exact same way pretty much, right? Uh, maybe I can just shift speak up here. Then let's hit tab. So like this. Okay, let's just like let's go to wireframe. So like this x vertices. Oops. Yeah, x vertices. Go back to solid. By the way, the way I got this shading up here in solid view is. Uh, if you click on the drop down, click on texture. Usually it's on material. If you put texture, it just has like a texture preview, which I feel like works a lot faster than uh, when you have the other option selected. So you can scale this up on Z axis. Come on. This could be like the, the top board, the signage where I can put like these, uh, the text up there. And Maybe I can select two of these guys right here. And so always, whenever you're working on stuff like this, you know, save out your assets, you know? That way you can like reuse them on other projects. Because like I said, the combinations are infinite. Like you could creatively use these in different projects without it being, you know, without it looking obvious that, hey, you recycle this piece. Sometimes it might look obvious, but hey, you're saving time. You know, you're not just making everything from scratch. So like that, maybe I can. Set Control J. Yeah, bring this guy right here. Right here, maybe. Once again, add modifier. Modifier, mirror, let's go up here, we'll select this cube, put it on y-axis. Now in my case it's y-axis, in your case it might be a different axis, so just like pay attention to what axis you're making it on. Okay, and then we'll go up here, I can select this, press L, Shift D, Shift D, go up. 
Maybe it'll just go up. Maybe we can scale this up a little bit. It's like a bigger piece on top. And go up here into like this. So like both of these should be again. Then we can rotate it. See what that gives us. Bring this down. Should be again. Bring this up. So you know, it's 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 a lot of fun. You know, so in just a few clicks, you end up getting something. Now, obviously, I'm showing this in a very quick, fast way, just to show you the technique. But you know, spend some time on this. You know, grab grab a few references. You know, make it look believable. Okay. So that was it. That was pretty much the technique that I use. Like all this complex stuff that looks like looks looks complicated up here. It was straight up just uh, me kid bashing everything. Now let's say for example you want to you don't want everything to be you know symmetrical let right so once you're done with your symmetry let's just go to tab we'll just do a visual geometry to mesh and we'll also hit control J so now it's all one piece so now you can come up here and just like you know go to edge mode add more edge loops here's like one right here control B and then Alt E extrude face along normals and you can like extrude parts of that make it a little bit more you know asymmetrical maybe we can pull some stuff down here let's go up here control r okay. alt shift shift control v and maybe i can just select these faces pull these down maybe or something i don't know and so you can like play around with it and make it look as unique as possible to yourself. And you see there's a little bit of tiling happening here one more time. So if you just hit tab, press A. Oh, hold on. Slide them over. We'll just do a smart EV project. See if that works any better. Yeah, it looks kind of blurry. Let's go back. Let's try cube projection. It's kind of messing it up, right? So what are we going to do for this part? Well, we're just going to go to the UV editor. Let's go up here pretty much. Select all these faces. Honestly, and if it's like in the distance where you won't really see it that much, you don't really have to worry about it a whole lot, I want to say. And uh, actually, you know what? My bad. You don't have to go to the UV editor. editor. You can just go and click on those cube projection, and that mostly fixes it. Yeah, never mind. Disregard that. Cause like my UV, I have so many images up here. Like I need to like figure out a way to like name them properly. Cause it's so hard to keep track of them. So I'm not gonna go go there for now. Okay, so that was kind of like the the way I made these stalls, pretty much. Now let's uh, let's go back. We can move this. This actually looks pretty cool. Get this out of the way. Let's show you how I made so all this Japanese text and everything. I had this image up here. I hope I still have okay right here. So actually it cut stuff out from here. Uh, let me see if I can like show it to you guys how I did it. The tons if you watch Ian Hebert's videos, he has like tons of videos on how like, you can just use a flat plane image, add edge loops extrude it out and keep the stuff that you need. So we're just gonna do a shift A image image as planes. Now if you don't have this option check, you need to go to your preferences, edit preferences, do add-ons and type uh, images. Huh. So right here, you wanna hit that little checkbox. Okay. Anyways, we'll go to image, images as planes, Let's open up a folder. I had, I went to the internet and saved a bunch of these images that I could use. So I think it was this one right here. And I'm actually going to delete all this for now because we don't really need this anymore. It's making my scene a little heavy. Okay, so probably put it up here somewhere. Where's my 3D cursor? Yeah, right here. So 
So what you can do is uh, go to ta hit tab. And I scaled it up, so I'm just going to apply my scale first. Tab, oops. So I want to extrude this part out and this part out. Now, even though these are like, you know, little... Ow! <laughs> even though these are like... These are like uh, stuff that's hanging. I just use it as a sign because it, it don't matter. And oh, you also have to be careful that it doesn't like flip your image. So let me make sure it did not do that because I didn't have an issue with that. And one of my friends told me that, hey, you're, the font is you know flipped over. And obviously I don't speak Japanese, so I had no idea until like someone else actually saw it. Let's just make sure it's not the case here. Where the hell is it? Okay, so we're good. It's not flipped. So here you can go hit Control R, put one right here. Control R, put one right here. Control R. It's a little bit tedious because you have to add edge loops, but it's still in the long run it helps out. Take this. E. Oop. And so we're just going to do this for a little bit the same way. Go up here, Control R, R, Control R. Cool. And so just by doing that, I ended up making like a bunch of these signs up here. Like this right here, this is just like a, just a cube, <laughs> pretty much. And so I pretty much did that for the most part. And like, you can like separate these parts out simply by just uh, selecting your faces pretty much. That's what I did. So that I don't have to like carry the whole image everywhere. Press P by selection. And then you have like this piece on its own. And so that's how I did it. And then like in the back right here, this is just a flat plane image, which worked out pretty well, honestly. So let's look at how I made the text up here pretty much. We need to go up here to text editor and then click on new. You know, I just like went to Google Translate and type like ramen shop or something. And then we're going to click on edit text to 3D object, one object. So right now you don't see anything because we need to change our font. And usually for Japanese, so you go up here, click on the little A up here, and then you click on font, click on this folder. And then if you just go to the very bottom, it's one of these four, I believe. Then click this one right here. And so now you have like, you know, Japanese font right there. Now it's still pretty flat. So to give it a little bit of thickness, we're going to go to geometry up here. We can extrude it out a little bit. And we can also offset it if we have to. And then, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we can mess around the depth as well. Just a little bit, resolution. And so that's how I made the text. And then from here, you can go back to the shader editor add a new shader you can just delete this shift a click uh, put an emission on it let's put that on surface like, like that. so let's see if you can render it and so now it's like emitting light as well so if i delete this point light it works better with um Cycles. Oh wait, right here. Time fusion blue. There you go. So that's how I got the the neon text pretty much. I have to be a little bit careful with it. You know, I feel like oh yeah, it is, okay, it is readable. From certain angles, it might not be readable. So just be mindful of that part. Okay. So that's how you pretty much made the text, the text part. And then there was a part where I had like some logos and stuff, right? So let's see where is it at. Like stuff like this, like this noodle thingy up here. <laughs> so the way I made that is so if you go shift A, 
We'll go to a curve. We'll make a busier curve. Let's get up, move this down here. And before you do that, have like an image that you can trace on top of it for like you know, noodles or something. And so hit tab, select everything, X, vertices, cool. Oh, let me turn on screencast. And then click on this little pen up here, the draw tool. And then let's say if I want to use your like your stylus. I I made a bowl up here, something like that. Maybe there's like a ball of stuff here. Maybe there's noodles flying like that. I don't know, something like that, right? And then from here, you go up here where you see this little thing. And then we're going to go to bevel. And on depth, just increase that a little bit so we get boop, ever so slightly. And then now you have like a 3D, you know, mesh of some sort. You can also go up here and go to extrude. And so it extrudes it outwards. And uh, yeah, that's about it pretty much. And then maybe you can rotate it and put the similar shader on it. Select like this, like this, control L linked materials hopefully i'm recording yes i'm recording let's render it so now this one has and then you can make like multiple emission shaders on this for example but for that you're gonna have to like separate parts of it out so for example i can go back to edit mode right click convert to mesh so like this press l l l l because I want the noodles to be a separate color. Hit P, selection, tap, okay. Has the same material, we'll just click on the number four here. Change the color, yellow, okay. So now I render it, boom, there you go. So that is neon signage, pretty much. Um, what you can also do if you want to take it a step further, which I learned after I made this piece, is that, let me see if I can add a, uh, Principal BSDF shader real quick. Put that up here. Well, actually, I knew this, but I did not try it on the text, which is a bummer. It would have been a really cool opportunity to get something cool. Put this on emission right there. And, oh, it's not working. Oh, maybe I don't need this. Delete that. Vision strength. Oh, okay, perfect. Strength to like, okay. That's a mission, right? Um, and then if you find like an image of like pixelated image of some sort, you can drop that in there. See projects, Tokyo, something like this. And if I put that on the alpha, I guess it's not really doing anything. Maybe I should try it on cycles. So shift A, color around. Ooh, look at that. So right now the scaling is really high on this. But you get like you see how like you get these lines up here. Control T on this guy. And so oh yeah, this looks a lot better. So you can get like that effect as well if you just put in like an alpha. So that was it. I should have made the sign this way. It would have looked, would have looked a lot more cooler. So honestly, that was it pretty much for the text and the graphics and the text. You can draw the graphics. You can type in the text. So that was the technique that I used for that. Moving on to the rest of the scene up here. So I made these tables. So after I was done with those signs, let's go back up here. You know, I put those signs all over the place. Now it was time to like make the tables and the floor. So this table up here, this was the first design I was doing. But it just didn't really work that well because I feel like it was just there and the design looked just weird. And the and so the first and I didn't notice this at first. And but before that I thought it'd be cool if I had some sort of like a lower level where you like step up, get your food, come back down, sit down. So I did that. I ended up uh, extruding this down a little bit. This like whole section. I did that first, and then for the table, 
I ended up redesigning it a little bit just so that there's a little bit of more functionality to it, pretty much. And once I had that figured out, and so you know, these were the, the plants, you know, some railing for the, some railing up here to like go up and down. I had these pillars up here that I put, but I ended up getting those out of the way because I felt like it was getting in the way of like all this nice text in the back. And then this this is one of the work in progress. It was the first paint door that I did. And the way I made these tables was just simple poly modeling, literally using a mirror modifier, used a cube, extruded it out, beveled it. Same thing for the chair as well. And then, you know, plants right there. Uh, these pipes, I downloaded an acid for that and just ended up reusing it. It was part of like a different acid which had some sci-fi looking pipes, so just use that. Uh, these wires up here, this was pretty cool. So let's make two cubes up here. Okay, we'll select these, these both. Hit Shift A, knots, and then catenary. And there you go, and then you get this wire between the two cubes or any object. And then you can click up here, to increase your steps if you want to. It's pretty much the resolution. The A part is the hanging part, how much you want it to hang. Bevel radi radius. It's for adding, you know, the thickness on the wire. So I did that. I made different sizes, different thickness of wires, and literally just copy pasted them all over the place. And so that was pretty much, and then, you know, these panels up here, I thought it'd be cool to have some sort of like a pathway where people can like walk through, go up and down, just to kind of like lead our eye towards those different paths. And so that was it for the blender part. And I got some little, you know, Coke machines up here, which I did the exact same way. I had it, an image plane, extruded it outwards, and that was pretty much it. Just those things, and these were all just like the same assets that I was able to extract from my previous models. And so that was it pretty much, and most of the lighting was coming from the neon lights up here. And from like, and then I had lights on the tables up here on the very top. Click on this. Like right, like these, these right here, these cubes, they're lights as well. A lot of lights was coming from the signage as well, so that was also another part of it. So that was it, and then we rendered it out. Let me show you guys what the render kind of looks like for them in the beginning. Just the 3D render for the most part, which is why subscribe so that I can afford expensive stuff. Anyways, so this was pretty much the 3D render. And you, as you, oh, you know what? I had another thing of light. Okay, my bad. So there was another source of lights coming up here also. It was this right here. It was literally just a cube that had an emission shader on it and it was like throwing light down. And then I also had a cube of fog, principal volume. And so that was adding like, a, that was giving us a little bit of that glow. And so after this, it was time for the paint over stage for this. And you know, just like in the previous video I showed you guys, I had different render passes for this. Um, and those render passes just helped me you know, make my selections and, uh, you know, add a little bit of fog and volume and things like that. So let's move on to the Photoshop part next. This was the final paint over right here. And I'm just gonna quickly go over how I made this. It's just, it was pretty quick. Um, it was very similar to the previous uh, drawing that I showed you guys, the process, process-wise. I'm just gonna hide everything pretty much up here. Okay, so this was a 3D render. Um, I had a folder with all their render passes. And so we had a volume pass, uh, which was set to screen, 100%. Ambient occlusion multiply, about 30%, because it was a little bit too strong. And then we had a bloom. So what bloom does, it adds a little bit more glow. And bloom was pretty strong as well, and 100% was like, poof. And so I lowered it down a little bit, because it was getting a little bit too foggy. Uh, mist pass was adding you know, a little bit of like, uh, atmosphere up here just to create some more depth and so I used it ever so slightly and then we had a curves layer I just used this to kind of like bring back some light on the on the lit on the little barricades up here and like the table and then I had a so here it was getting like pretty gray up here so I ended up using a soft light blend mode and I just painted some blues up there just to get a little bit more color up there and then I had some, this layer right here, I had a little bit of texture on the table itself because it looked a little bit too clean and slick. 
and uh, usually there's a little bit of uh, wear and tear. This was just a layer that I had. So then I had the food up here. This was this was pretty much just photo bashed, just from Google got images and just like match the perspective as as best as I could. <laughs> this was really hard. I should have spent some more time on this if I'm being honest with y'all. And then this layer up here was just adding a little bit of you know shadow beneath the food. And then we had a level slider and this was clipped to the food folder just to like darken everything a little bit, color balance, and then hue saturation. And then this another layer just to make it a little bit more bluish, I want to say. And then, uh, you know, this was and then darken because I feel like it was, there was a little bit, there was a lot of contrast happening. So I wanted to like um, pull that away a little bit. And uh, that was it pretty much. So if you think about it, a lot of the work was done with the render passes honestly. And uh, now I liked how this atmosphere was working in my favor. So that was the final painting. So, you know, like do as much as you can in 3D so that it becomes easy for you to like um, go over the final paint over stages. So yeah, that was it, you guys. I made it this far. <laughs> All right, so that should be all for today. Thank you so much for coming by and watching this video. It means a lot to me. If you enjoyed watching this and if you want me to post more stuff like this, definitely subscribe to my channel, like, share. I'll be posting more stuff every week. Pretty much we'll be doing more breakdowns. Then we're gonna be doing more paintings as well. Just a wide range of things that I've planned out for you guys. So yeah, thanks so much for coming by. I'll see you guys in the next one.